Greetings, students, and welcome to this episode of The Professor Travel. I am your host, The Professor Travel, coming to you from Orange County, California. This is the website, the vlog, and the podcast where you go to in order to learn more about different countries, in order to have a discussion with the members of this group. Uh, you can travel more, hopefully. You can enjoy life more. Again, you can reach me through a lot of different uh, social media sites, starting with, of course, my website, which is at theprofessortravel.com. Uh, you can also reach me on both YouTube and Facebook at The Professor Travel. I'm now on TikTok, so if you want to reach me there, you can go to TikTok at The Professor Travel. Um, on Instagram, I can be reached at The underscore Professor underscore Travel. On Twitter, I am at The Professor TR1. And if you're a blogger, you can find me on Blogspot at TheProfessorTravel.blogspot.com. Today, my visiting professor is Ricardo Cabre. Ricardo, say hello to everybody. <laughs> Hi everybody! Hey, Did I just Scott, murder your you? name? <laughs> Did I just murder your name? I hope not. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, it, it happens quite often. At least there wasn't an H in it. Most people tend to say Ricardo, which oh, I don't know. What no, you're no, 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 no. We will not do that on this podcast. So thank you so much for being. I appreciate you being here with us to share your insight on a recent cruise that you did. Um, t but before we get started with that, can you please tell us a little bit about your background? Maybe a little bit about your educational background or some of the travels that you've been on. Sure. So uh, educational background is uh, primarily supply chain and finance. Um, originally from Miami, uh, that's where I grew up, uh, born in Venezuela, and then uh, moved all around the state of Florida. Now I live in North Carolina. From a travel standpoint, um, avid traveler, both domestically uh, as a result of my job. Uh, I'm in the sales side now of things on the beer, on the craft beer side of the business for sales. And uh, also internationally, uh, traveled uh, almost every country in Western Western Europe, and now starting to dabble on the Eastern side of things, as you know, which is where we met um, summer of last year. And uh, now I'm starting to dabble a little bit also in Asia, looking to uh, head out to China um, spring of this year as well, now that I have one of my best friends that just recently relocated out there. So um, travel is definitely in my DNA, and it's something <laughs> that I look forward to far more this year. Well, and I definitely want to travel with you again in the future. You're a very fun person to have on travels together. So um, just a great, great opportunity to do some traveling. As he was making mention to you, the students, uh, we recently went on a cruise back in, I think it was August of this last year, and we had an opportunity to do a few of the countries in the Mediterranean and mostly on the eastern side um, in the Aegean. So that was a really fun opportunity. But for purposes of this vlog and podcast, we're going to focus on a little bit of a different cruise. Talk to us a little, a little bit about where you decided to go to for this cruise and why. Yeah, so um, every December we've made it a bit of a tradition to always do a pre-Christmas cruise, whether it be with a little bit of family, some friends, small, tight circle of folks that go with us. Uh, we always do the week before December because it just tends to be fun time right before the hectic holidays tend to kick up there before the end of the year. Um, and we tend to do it kind of, it's kind of a value week for the cruise season. Mm -hmm. uh, we tend to pick uh, Carnival Cruise Lines. Um, it's, it's a good bang for the buck um, uh, cruise. And uh, why we decide to go, A, it's warm. We've got a lot of friends that live in cold climates. Uh, it's, they tend to come out of Florida. So people like to go to Florida and they bundle it up with other, other holiday plans. Uh, whether it be with family and friends down there and uh, see it's just a great time so we always just tend to pick it uh, excellent this, yeah and so, so what, what were the different locations that you were going to be going to in this cruise so a good question um this year was kind of a makeup cruise for us uh two years ago we had opted on an itinerary on an itinerary that took us to saint thomas san juan uh turks and caicos and dominican republic but um, as we all know, 2017, Hurricane Maria came around and um, it affected St. Thomas and Puerto Rico um, severely. And uh, it also affected quite a few of these cruises and uh, also affected ours. So this was a makeup cruise for us. And uh, fortunately, we had the opportunity to go ahead and uh, make it to both St. Thomas and San Juan in addition to Dominican Republic and Grand Turk. Awesome. And just for my listeners, do you need to get any type of a travel visa in going down to the specific locations that you were talking about? Or did you have to take any type of travel medications as part of that process? So great question as well. No. Uh, one, of the, one of the great things about um, going to some of these destinations on a cruise is 
in fact, in some cases, you don't even need a passport. Um, a birth certificate is all you really need to go to some of these locations. And, and as, as maybe some uh, listeners know or don't know, um, both Puerto Rico and St. Thomas are part of the United States. Mm -hmm. So they're territory. So as long as you uh, go with a U.S. passport or a birth certificate, you're perfectly okay. Excellent. In fact, and I was just listening to a podcast talking about what are called closed loop cruises, which is exactly what you're talking about, where you leave from the United States, you come back to the United States, you may hit a couple of local um, areas uh, or other countries, uh, such as Bermuda or the Caribbean or Bahamas. And as part of that process, like you were saying, you may, it may be awesome for you to be able to just have your state driver's license as well as your birth certificate. But the thing you want to also be aware of, just, the, just so the students are aware, um, it's always a good opportunity to have your passport with you, just because in the unlikely event that the ship takes off without you, then how are you going to get back? You might have to take a flight, in which case, well, guess what? Maybe you might need your passport in that case. Not necessarily for Puerto Rico or the U.S. Virgin Islands, but for some of those other locations in the Caribbean, maybe you might need to do that. Absolutely. And that's a great point that you bring up because uh, there have been instances um, as a result of people that uh, do excursions outside of the cruise for whatever reason, uh, the, the ship will leave you. And uh, you do need to go ahead and either uh, catch up with the ship at the next port or make it back home on your own dime. Uh, so you need to make sure that you have all the proper documentation to return home uh, safely. Absolutely. And I actually do want to delve into the, uh, the excursions that you do through the cruise line versus uh, taking it on your own in just a second. But I do want to start to talk a little bit about uh, the process of the vacation and getting ready for that. So as, as part of the prepacking process, what kind of weather did you expect as you were heading out on this type of a journey? And for how long were you looking to go? So this cruise was a week long. Um, Traveling from North Carolina, I, I, I see that we're going to be talking about the pre-vacation and the flights and so on. Uh, but from a packing standpoint, the, the Caribbean tends to be a little um, sketchy, so to speak, any time of year. We always like to go uh, December time, number one, because it's warm. But from, uh, from a port standpoint in Florida, uh, you always should at least pack to have some cooler, some cooler weather. So always pack for like a light sweater or a hoodie or a sport coat of some kind, because also on the cruise itself, um, you, you, you do tend to dress up a little nicer at evening. So at least a sport coat is what I tend to pack always uh, for a carnival cruise. Carnival tends to be a little more casual from the cruising standpoint. So a sport coat is not necessarily required, but I always tend to pack one for myself. And that always tends to be also my preferred choice for, uh, for the uh, winter wear, so to speak. Okay, uh, and I was gonna say on that same topic, I have never been to the Caribbean yet, although I am planning on going in spring with my husband. I was gonna ask you, um, what's the humidity like down in that area? This, uh, during, the, during the winter season, it's generally not, it's generally not humid, uh, but you can expect some relative light humidity, so to speak. It is warm though. Uh, some of the ports that we went to were relatively warm. Okay. They are beach destinations. So for somebody, I will say it's all relative. For somebody who is not used to the humidity, it will be humid. For someone like myself, uh, raised in Florida, I found it perfectly appealing. <laughs> so. well, and that, and that brings up a good topic because you're used to that from Florida. I'm from California. We're, we live in a desert. On our recent cruise that the two of us went on in, um, in the Aegean, Many of, the, many of the port stops were way more humid than I was used to. Did you experience kind of the same thing? Oh, or was I, it easy for you? I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. See, I, I, yeah, heat, heat and humidity are fine by me. Okay. Because you, you can always run back into the uh, air conditioning and escape from it. Okay. So. <laughs> Not a problem then. Okay, so it is just me. I just want to double check that. <laughs> so no problem. No, but, I, but listen, I get I get where you're coming from, and that's one of those things where it's you know weather and food are are all very relative to to folks. So, and we'll, we're going to talk about food also in just a second because I want to touch base on some of the cuisine that you had down in that area. Um, before we do that, talk to me about how you got from North Carolina to the port destination that you were embarking from. Sure. Um, in our specific situation, we drove. 
Okay. Uh, it's a bit of a drive uh, from Western North Carolina, where we live now, to Port Canaveral. Uh, I would say anywhere from about nine to ten hours. Okay. Uh, but but we do that we do that for several reasons. Number one, uh, from where we live, uh, availability of flights are limited. Availability and cost of flights are limited. That's one. And two, we just prefer the flexibility of having our own vehicle. So, okay, that's actually yeah. pretty good. What was the parking rate that you had to pay down in that area? Uh, good question. Uh, in the Cocoa Beach area, there are several options. You can either park right on the right in the port, and uh, the uh, Port Canaveral over the years has continued to expand uh, their parking decks to provide additional parking options directly in the port where the ship is located. So as specific to each Carnival ship, um, each Norwegian cruise line, each Royal Caribbean. Uh, you can park directly in front of it. It is it is costly, uh, but it's convenient because you're right there. Uh, so as soon as you as soon as you get you arrive, you're right there. As soon as you um, uh, debark, uh, disembark, uh, you, you just get pull up right into the garage and off you go. Um, there are other options um, off the port property that are far less expensive, which is what we opted to do this year. Uh, I would say less than half the price. Uh, but then, you know, you are at the uh, mercy of having to wait for a shuttle, having to go down there, and so on. But if you're willing to pay a little less, then that's that's what you deal with. We did it, and it was fine. There is another major advantage that I just thought of with respect to the way that you decided to go versus the way that I might decide to go. So if I'm flying from one location to another, I'm I'm only allowed maybe two carry-ons and two large suitcases. But if you're driving from your home to the port, a lot of the cruise lines aren't necessarily going to ding you on the number of bags you bring on. It's just a matter of what you can comfortably fit into your stateroom, you know, whether it's under the bed or in the different areas. Um, how many sure. bags do you guys bring along with you? So that's the great thing about a Caribbean cruise this time of year. You don't have to pack a lot. Ooh, that's true. You know, and, um, and generally speaking for a carnival cruise, because it is a far more casual cruise line, you don't, you definitely don't need to pack as much. So evening attire on most, on most evenings is a nice pair of jeans and just a nice button down shirt like I'm wearing, or maybe a polo. Okay. Um, it, all day long, you're in a pair of, you're in a pair of swim trunks and you know, a t-shirt <laughs> when, when you're on the ship. And that's generally how it goes. If you choose to dress a little nicer, you can. Uh, so for us, we packed, um, a really heavy carry-on each, and then maybe a backpack, and that was it. Okay. Now, yeah. I know when we were traveling through Europe, you and I, uh, we did a lot of excursions where we would go to certain religious places, and in order for us to go to those religious places, they were very conservative. You can't, you, you need to be wearing pants, you can't be wearing shorts, you can't be wearing a tank top. Um, are there any things like that on any of the destination locations that you went to? Just in case you have, maybe we have some students who are a little bit more interested in the uh, cultural dynamic of maybe going to museums or religious locations that might be in the general area. Absolutely. Um, I So on this specific um, cruise this year, we did not do any of those excursions. Okay. I would say, uh, because I'm familiar with Puerto Rico intimately, because my family is from there as well, I would just generally say that if you were to go to any of those types of locations, like a church of some kind or a museum, just follow some common sense and just go um, in pants or some decent shorts and just a shirt of some, a button down shirt of some kind. I wouldn't go in there and like flip flops, so to speak, and so on. Uh, that said, though, it is a Caribbean island and they follow that Caribbean mantra and culture, which is relatively very casual. Uh, as long as you're not walking in there sloppy, you're okay. <laughs> okay. So you start at Port Canaveral. First and foremost, how was the, well, did, did you stay overnight in Port Canaveral or did you stay somewhere else prior to the cruise? We stayed in Orlando at uh, one of our close friends' homes. Okay. Uh, because one of the, uh, they were coming with us on the cruise. Oh, nice. So, yeah. So we spent an evening with them, hanging out, having a good time, went and had dinner, saw some friends and uh, yeah, uh, drove out, drove out from there. And what, what was your, what, did you guys have similar boarding times? Uh, it was all the same boarding time. That's how we planned it. So the, the vacation itself was pre-planned about 10 months ago. And then as we got closer to the, to the actual 
um, scheduling of the boarding times, we all did it at the same time. Okay, perfect. So let's talk about the embarkation process. Um, how long did it take? Um, and what were your first impressions of the ship that you went on? Five minutes. Uh, wow, that's incredible. It, it was, it, the embarkation process was um, on point, spectacular with them. And they, I will say over the, over the 10 years that I've been cruising with Carnival, mm -hmm. they have really nailed down this process. You really walk, walk right through, go through security. And um, as soon as you go there, it's no longer a matter of taking a picture unless your picture really doesn't match your passport. And they have your keys ready to go in your room. Uh -huh. Whereas before they had to print your keys um, on site right then and there. And that would take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. Oh, wow. Okay. And what were your first impressions of the ship? What was the ship that you were on? Uh, it was the Carnival Breeze. It's, uh, I believe it's, it's one of their dream class ships. So relatively large ship. Uh, it was clean. Uh, our cabins were ready to go, prepped. We met our steward within five minutes uh -huh. of uh, getting on. Uh, pleasant, pleasant experience. So, um, yeah, I mean, everything was uh, ready to go uh, with, with regards to the cabin. Uh, we were on deck eight, which we generally like to take a higher level deck. It was balcony. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we were two levels below the legal deck, which is what we generally enjoy, having to be close, as close as possible to all the amenities. So that when we wake up in the morning, we, we just are there. That's pretty nice, actually. Um, yeah. I know on the previous cruise that you and I had gone on, we had opted to go on the lower deck, and we were right above, like, I want to say we were on deck number th two or three or something like that, and that's right above the embarkation, but we didn't hear any pro. We didn't literally hear anybody coming on board. So for us to leave, it was really, really fast on the di disembarkation process. Yeah. Um, so I guess it's really depending upon what your view is and uh, what your position is. On that same note, I do want to know, just based on what you just said to me a couple of minutes ago, about how many cruises do you think you've been on over the last 10 plus years? Uh, I want to say it's been about 11. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so we, average about, we average about one a year. Okay. I, think, I think now, though, we are going to be doing um, about two a year averaging is what we're looking at. Uh, because we did the one in August, we did this one in December, and we're booked on two more coming up here within the next year, potentially one more in December. Awesome. Okay, cool. Um, so when you got on board, um, did you head right up to the buffet or like, did you just hang out, maybe get some drinks? Like what was your initial unwinding process? Yeah. So first we stop in, in the, um, in the cabin, drop off our bags. If we're in sneakers, uh, general recommendation would be um, make sure you have a change of clothes with you on hand because your bags will not make it um, to your room right away. If you drop them off to the porter uh, downstairs, uh, keep in mind it's going to be several hours in some cases before your bags make it to your cabin. So if you're looking, if you're in a pair of jeans, you just got into the airport, um, your sneakers, and you just want to wind down, you want to get into a hot tub or one of the pools, make sure you have a change of clothes with you and your backpack ready to go um, so you're able to change. So that's a good note there. Excellent. Um, yeah, and then what we do, if, if some, some folks are hungry, uh, want to grab a bite to eat, want to grab a cocktail or a drink, uh, we head upstairs to the Lido or any of the bars that we're already generally familiar with, with these types of layouts. And uh, off we go. Most of these ships are generally laid out the same for the most part. Stairs are where they need to be. Um, it's just a matter of quickly finding your way around and off you go. Yep. Do, do you like that or do you like the idea of maybe exploring a new ship? Like what, what, what do you, do you like familiarity or are you more of the explorer type? I'm more the explorer type. Uh, when I mean that the ships are generally laid out the same, it's, you know, the Lido deck is always going to be where it is. It's either deck nine, deck 10 up there. Um, you know, the common, the main common areas like the casinos and the larger restaurants are going to be deck four, deck five. So it's pretty quick. It's a quick process to get acquainted with, you know, your home away from home for the next seven days. Cause that's what it becomes. Okay. And yeah. talk to me about what the itinerary was going to look like over the seven day period for you. Okay. Um, with regards to this one, uh, the first day was going to be a day at sea because um, our first stop was going to be Dominican Republic. Okay. Um, 
So stop one was DR and it was Amber Cove, which is a private, it's a private port stop for Carnival Cruise Corporation. So whether it was Carnival Cruise itself, Princess, or any of the other um, brands that Carnival Cruise owns, those are the ones that stopped there. Uh, second stop was St. Thomas, followed by San Juan, and then the last stop was um, Grand Turk of Turks and Caicos. Okay. And then final day at sea. Okay, perfect. So let's have you walk us through the day by day on this. So that way we can get a little bit of an idea of not only the places that you went to, but maybe um, some things that you did in the meantime, especially the sea days, because I do have some of my listeners, uh, the students are interested in knowing maybe what, what a person does on sea days, especially if they're considering something like a transatlantic cruise or a cruise from like Los Angeles or Long Beach to Hawaii. And that could have a lot of sea days involved with something like that. So they're kind of wondering, what would you do during that time frame? So I've always contemplated whether or not I could handle a transatlantic that had that many sea days, because that's, that's a lot of time uh, cooped up and not being able to get off the ship, because I really enjoy getting off the ship, even if it's just for an hour or two. Yeah. Uh, so on a sea day, what we, what we generally do, uh, we travel with a group of folks that don't have any any set agenda, so we don't necessarily have to be together at all at all times, which is great. Um, some of us wake up, have, go have a breakfast. Um, others get up and go to the gym. Um, there's plenty of activities. With regards to with regards to Carnival, Carnival has a little bit of everything for everyone. It's one of those cruise lines that you will see all all age range, all sorts of age ranges. Um, across the board. So they've got all sorts of different, very interesting and eclectic competitions that take place on the Lido deck from, um, and whether you're into them or not, it's up to you. You can go hang out in your balcony, but they've got a hairy chess competition to, yeah, to, it's definitely, it's definitely not uh, the cruise that we went on last summer um, to a, um, a booty dance contest to make the best drink contest, which then they start serving down at one of their bars and they sell for the rest of the cruise day. Um, yeah. And then they have gambling competitions down at the casino, all sorts of different activities um, ranging for all, for all age ranges. Um, let's, let's chat. Uh, let's chat about something for just a second. Cause my, my, my listeners might be saying, Oh my gosh, well, I would never want to go on a cruise like that. I, that would be weird. And, or I, I, that's not my, type of activity and rest assured there's a different kind of cruise line for every type of taste that's out but, there and yeah and i want to i want to emphasize that there's a there's a different type of cruise line for every type of for every type of uh, traveler uh, but in addition the reason why we choose to go on this one in december is because it's kind of a little bit of a let loose type of thing and there's a different type of activity for everyone so if you want to go catch five minutes of one of those competitions you can go get a laugh and go do it, and then you can go off and do something a little more mellow um, in the afternoon. There's uh, an adult-only serenity at the very top of the cruise, which is very nice and quiet. There's the back end of the cruise ship where, where there's nothing going on, and you can just sit back and read a book and hang out, get in the hot tub. Uh, yeah, there's all different varying uh, forms of activities that you can uh, partake in. Or if you just want to kick back in your balcony room, if you chose to book a balcony room, go ahead and do it. They're fairly quiet. Yeah, and on, and on a larger scale, uh, when it relates to the specific cruise lines, for example, Carnival, uh, they, they refer to themselves as the fun ship. And so right. part of that is that they have a lot of activities. Some of them are kind of wacky. Some of them are kind of fun. Um, but they definitely try to keep you engaged a lot. Um, if you take, a, if you take uh, advantage of, say, for example, a Viking River cruise, which is gearing itself more towards a cultural experience. And so everybody on board is gonna do these excursions. They're gonna have guest lecturers on board, something like that. That's a very different feel than something like a carnival cruise. Um, there's also other ones that are out there like Princess, which is a little bit geared towards um, the higher end. Same with Celebrity. Um, you might have Holland America, which is geared a little bit more towards the target market of an older crowd. Um, right. and they're all, they're all fantastic. Disney. Oh my gosh, Disney. I couldn't forget them. They're definitely geared towards the family environment. And so you have all these different cruise lines that are geared towards a specific target market and the activities involved in those tar in, in those um, cruises will reflect that as well. So I'm sorry, I didn't want to get us off track, but I definitely no. want to bring that out. 
And I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. So I, I think, you know, as we preface that, we just have to make sure that when people are looking to purchase their cruise vacation, they just take that into consideration that um, there's just going to be those types of activities. There's the ability to pick and choose those activities once you're on board, uh, but there's a way to also not do those once you're on board as well. So there's a little bit of fun for everyone if you choose it. And so uh, you saw, so you got to see these contests. Um, how was the food on the first day that you were there? Do you remember what you did? Um, so the, the, you mean the first day, like the day at sea? Yeah. So uh, food, food is uh, never without want on, on a cruise ship, as you can imagine. There's always food somewhere on, you can find it somewhere. Uh, Carnival does a very good job of providing food options um, over the course of the day. Uh, I'm, I will tell you personally, I'm generally not a huge buffet person, uh, but Carnival does a good job with the buffet. Uh, as soon as they shut down a breakfast buffet, there's a lunch buffet going somewhere. And I will say, there, this was the first time that I saw that there were some really interesting food options. The Breeze was the one that actually introduced a couple of new things from what I saw versus one of its sister ships that we went on two years ago, the Magic. Mm -hmm. Like, um, we, I think I mentioned this to you a couple of weeks ago. We we tried the guys pig and anchor. Yeah. Like, um, I'm not I, I'm not a big fan of barbecue, but I, I gotta say these guys for being able to actually do barbecue out in the middle of the ocean was pretty interesting. That they're only open for a, a couple of hours during the day, and um, out at sea. It was packed, and as soon as as soon as they're they're they they're done, they're done. Like they close up shop because there's only so much barbecue you can cook, I guess, over the course of the day. Well, and the yeah. reason for that is because they have the smoker on there, so they've only prepared so much uh, pork and so much beef ahead of time. Um, but and and again, to to the viewers who are like, well, wait a minute, it, it doesn't make sense to me. You know, it's like, why wouldn't they just make more, or why wouldn't you know what? Why wouldn't there be a barbecue situation out at sea all the time? I don't understand why that's the case. Well, again, think of the ter think of it in terms of one of the biggest enemies a, a ship has is fire, and so. Having having a restaurant that has like a full on flame grill or smoker or something like that, that has to be very carefully monitored at all times to make sure they're within compliance. Yeah. And there is zero tolerance for any hiccups on that because they don't want to burn down the ship. So exactly, it's you know it's it's a logistic. It, you think about it. I mean, this thing has fourteen hundred crew members, thirty seven hundred passengers, at all times. It's a logistics. It's a logistics process um, requirement for them, so they got to keep it fully maintained. Plus, their crew members have pulled double and triple duty. As soon as those guys that are busy serving and roasting beef and pork all morning are done, they're going downstairs, taking a break, changing, and then serving your meals at night in the in the main dining room. So yeah. it's a constant rotation of folks that are going in there and doing double duty um, all day long. It's it's impressive how they run these operations. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, it's kind of yeah. it's unbelievable to me from, from us looking at it from a nine to five perspective, you know, where we're used to just, oh, well, I just work nine to five and that's it. When you're seeing people who are double and sometimes triple shifts, it's because the money that they can make from stuff like that, you know, if they, if they work these double shifts, if, provided they're not on salary, is just an incredible amount for them. And it's, it's, it's helpful, especially if they're sending money back home to family and friends. Typically. Sure. Um, back to meal options. Uh, the other one that really stood out was the bonsai sushi place. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're, if you're a sushi guru or big on sushi, it's not going to be the most impressive sushi that you'll eat, but it's good quality. I found it to be relatively good quality. It's a very limited menu. Obviously uh, being on a cruise ship, it's, um, you're not going to, you're not going to get, you know, quail eggs and uni and all, and all the great weird stuff that but they'll you know, have your california rolls they'll have your crunchy rolls they'll have your spicy tuna rolls things like that and they're going to be great quality and I, I will i will definitely say this it was probably the best miso soup i have ever had in my entire life which is um hmm. pretty interesting why is how, that how they prepared it how they served it how they presented it um they give you the little they give you a little pad of noodles first and then she comes out she comes out with the little bowl of 
the miso broth and the scallions separate and then they just present it to you it just comes out very very fresh and um good flavor it was it was on point so that good. was really good. and then the the other one at the very back of the ship they have like this um seafood stand raw bar uh which i I've never even considered that to be an option on a cruise ship, uh, but uh, they were serving raw oysters. And uh, I, I have a, one of our really good friends that was with us. She's really big into like, raw oysters. And I'm like, are you willing to give us a shot on a cruise ship? She goes, yeah, they, they look nice and fresh. Let's give it a shot. And they were great. Were they actually shucking them there? Do you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, they, 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 chuck them in the, they, they shuck them in the back, but uh, yeah. Because they pulled them, they pulled them right out from where they were uh, showing them, and they took them in the back. Now I don't know if it's some sort of illusion that they're like, oh, let me just pull these twelve and bring out, you know, let me pull out these six and bring out twelve other ones that were already <laughs> shocked. But yeah, no, well, it was uh, it was good. I was going to say, did you also engage in any entertainment during the night times? Um. So we, we didn't go to the theater. And part of the reason why we didn't do the theater is because number one, we generally ate fairly late. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had the, we had the your time dining, which was show up whenever you want. We didn't do the assigned uh, dining. And uh, so by the time that we were done eating, uh, the, the, the theater options or the options in the theater were, had already started. So we didn't do that. Um, a couple of us, I believe, attended the late night comedy hours, which I've done in previous cruises. I chose not to do this. Uh, there, Carnival has, sitting at the bar, they do these um, violin trio groups, which we have thoroughly enjoyed. And it's, it's this, mod, it's this um, classical take on modern music, where they just sit there and they just start playing modern music on their violins. Uh, and it's they are great so we really enjoyed them and then in the evenings um we would go to one of the one of the bars called the red frog pub Mm, yeah Uh, they had live music there and uh karaoke live music type of stuff which is the stuff that we really enjoyed so that's most of the stuff that we really enjoyed doing awesome did you or any of your friends engage in any of the casino activities at all um very limited and uh, i'm i'm glad you asked uh, with regards to that, because w- even though we're not um, we're not big gamblers, we still like to, on occasion, sit down and throw a few bucks on a table sure. while we're on the ship. Um, this ship happened to be, uh, and we did we didn't know this when we booked, but apparently in the middle of, in the middle of the summer, um, Carnival threw a promotion out there for their what's called their Ultra Club, okay. which is their, apparently it's their it's their gamblers club. Mm. or people who gamble quite a bit on their on their um on their ships and uh it turned out that there were i and this is hearsay but i'll take it because it felt that way anywhere from like 600 to 700 um ultra members on this ship wow which is approximately a fifth of the ship and um they they basically dominated that casino the entire time if you don't know, if you don't know um, cruise ship gamblers, they're pretty, um, they're pretty ardent uh, gamblers. Like they, they'll find a machine, yeah, they'll find a machine or a table, and they'll sit, they'll, they'll stick to it the entire week they're there. Like, and you'll see them there all week long. It's, it's, it's impressive. <laughs> to answer your question, we did not, we did not spend a lot of time at the casino. We spent um, more time, we spent more time upstairs enjoying the, enjoying the weather. How was the smoke situation like around the ship? Um, it, it, in the casino, in the casino, it was it was uh, heavy, okay. um, but they but they keep it to a minimum um, everywhere else in the ship. There is a small smoking section, uh, one level above the Lido, and uh, you can't smoke anywhere else on the ship. Um, there's no smoking on the balconies or anything. Uh, Carnival Carnival eliminated that uh, quite a few years ago. And uh, really important for the students to know, if you are on a cruise, never, ever, ever throw anything overboard. Not cigarette yeah. butts, nothing. That'll get you kicked off the ship. And they, and they do have cameras monitoring various different spots. So please be very careful not to do that. You don't want to end your cruise on a bad note like that. 
and they will, and cruise lines will expel you for life in some cases, depending on what they find. Yeah, exactly. All right, so let's start talking about the first port of call. Where was, after the sea day, what was your first actual location? Where was that again? It was Amber Cove, uh, Dominican Republic. Nice. So it's a, it's, a private, it's a private port of Carnival. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and just as a footnote, this was the first cruise that we did that we didn't actually book any um, excursions through the crew, through the cruise line. Okay. Uh, we decided to just do more of a beach kind of hangout, desti uh, beach destination sort of cruise um, and just see how it went. Uh, so first one was Amber Cove, great weather. Um, we decided to just um, hang out there at the port mm -hmm. and enjoy the, the, the port itself. Um, so we stopped in, it was great. Is Amber Cove a tendered location or do they actually have a dock? They have a dock. Okay. So perfect. everywhere, everywhere we went um, on this one was a dock, no tender. Okay, perfect. Um, yep. Since I made mention of it earlier, let me bring it up right now. Since you're talking about the excursions, um, when you made mention earlier of the cruise lines offering excursions versus you going and getting it yourself, it brings up a really interesting topic because when you're booking your own excursions, which you can do. Um, there are some risks that you do run of something like that. For example, if they don't get you back in time, maybe there's a traffic issue on the island. Maybe there's something that's happening somewhere. If they don't get you back in the appropriate timeline and your cruise ship leaves, you might be out of luck unless you have traveler's insurance or something else that could help to get you back to where you need to get to. On the other hand, when you book through the cruise lines, they have a um, guarantee that's built into those in, in I think almost every case that I've seen where they will, if you, if your cruise is, or if your um, tour is running late, they will hold up the ship in order to make sure they're accommodating you waiting for you in that particular case. And I know some independent cruise or some independent tour operators will guarantee that they will get you back to the cruise in time for your departure. But sometimes that can be a little bit rushed and it, it can get a little bit crazy. So again, to my students, just be mindful of stuff like that. That's a good point, and, uh, and that is right. Um, if you book an excursion through the cruise, you generally pay a little more, but you are guaranteed um, that you will be back on the ship or that they will hold the ship for you. Exactly. All right, so after Amber Cove, what is our next destination? So next destination was St. Thomas. I believe it was Charlotte Amelie, the port of Charlotte Amelie. Okay. And uh, that one... Weather, the, the way, um, our, our ride from Amber Cove to St. Thomas was quite choppy because we were facing a headwind, and then we ended up um, arriving to quite a bit of rain. So we ended up staying on the ship for a little bit. Fortunately, the weather cleared up, and then we just decided to walk around the port, and finally we got a little adventurous and hopped in a cab and uh, went to, what was it called? Um, Megan's Bay Beach, hmm. which is on the, on the, I believe it's on the north side of the island. Okay. And uh, you can Google it, it's M-A-G-E-N-S. And uh, it's a beautiful beach on, um, it's basically a, a little bay on the north side of the beach. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's a public beach. Um, I believe you have to pay like, four or five bucks a person, um, nothing crazy. And they have a bar and a restaurant right on the beach where you can get drinks and just hang out uh, and just enjoy it all day. Cabs will take you there. It's, uh, it's a short ride. Uh, felt very comfortable to go there on a cab, in a cab and uh, catch a cab back. Um, they all know the routes and they'll all tell you that they'll get you back to the cruise on time. So Perfect. St. Thomas is a relatively small island. So the odds of you missing the ship are few and far between. Did you have, were you accosted by any merchants along the way or was it pretty much? None, none. I mean, uh, most of the merchants, most of the merchants that you talk to um, are right in the port um, and all extremely friendly. So not, nothing to be worried about and get accosted by, so. Okay, perfect. The, the nice thing about St. Thomas, like I mentioned earlier, US territory, so cat, a little bit of cash, 
Uh, you don't need to take your passport or any documentation. The only thing you need to take off the ship with you is your room key and, oh. um, and, and your license as ID. That's it. That actually brings up another topic I didn't even think about. When you were going through all of these different destinations that you were headed to, did you need anything else except for U.S. money or could you pretty much use your dollar anywhere you went to? I, I, all I would take down with, take off the ship with me would be my room key, um, my license, some cash, dollars, and a credit card. That's okay. all I took with me. Yeah. That's easy enough. And, yeah. And my credit card, my, my license was more as a form of identification just in case I needed it. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, sorry to hear about the choppy weather that you had. Um, did you guys at least use something during the evening, at least, to kind of make that up? I'm sorry, can you repeat that again? Oh, I was saying, did you guys at least use something during the evening that you went to St. Thomas to kind of make that up? Um, some, at least something on the ship or something at least kind of cool to do? Oh, yeah, we always make it up. We, we went back and had dinner on the ship and had drinks and had a fabulous time. Okay, good. What you do. Yeah. You got to make um, yeah, it you got yeah, once I mean, once the ship turned around and we had and we had the uh, headwind as a tailwind behind us, it was all great. So okay. it was fine. Yep. All right. So that was St. Thomas. Uh, was was the next stop St. Martin then, or no? The next stop was Puerto Rico. Oh wow. Okay. Now Puerto Rico, I I I haven't been to yet, but I'm dying to go to. I keep hearing so many wonderful things about Old San Juan. And so, talk to me a little bit about what you guys ended up doing when you were there. So Puerto Rico was a special stop because um, the way that we planned it, uh, my aunt, 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 um, she lives in San Juan. Um, I spent a lot of time grow, um, while I was growing up in Puerto Rico because my mom is from Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. um, so the way, that we, the way that we chose to do this was um, she, she, rented a, she rented a large a larger van, a minivan, and came and picked us up at the port. And we were we kind of designed our own little mini excursion um, that day. We were not going to do, we were not going to spend the entire day in Old San Juan. Um, I wanted to take my my friends to kind of see what I remember of San Juan, kind of growing up. So our first first uh, we got off the ship and um, we see my my aunt, and then um, I get a little tap on my back, and it's my mother who. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So from Miami, who surprised was there to surprise me and my friends um, off the ship. So that was an amazing surprise. Wow. Yeah. 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 So that was really neat. Um, so after the surprise and a couple of pictures and this and that, I'm like, all right, mom, we've got maybe about seven hours total. So we got to we got to get trekking. <laughs> and uh, for, for those of you who are not familiar with Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico is a um, island that's about 100 miles wide, 100 miles long by 30, 35 miles wide, give or take. Uh, Puerto Ricans will tell you that it's a, little, a lot bigger, but they're very, Puerto Ricans are very proud people. I love it. Um, and then you've got about three to three and a half million people that live on the island. So it's a very, it's a very tightly packed, a lot of traffic all the time, um, but nevertheless, fun. So you got you to gotta get moving pretty quickly. Uh, so we, we moved out east to... Um, East San Juan, which is where um, my aunt lives. We went to this area called um, Biñones, which is uh, a very local area. And I've always been one to kind of get off the beaten path, so to speak, and you know, not stay in the touristy areas. Biñones is an, is an older area, um, very community type beaches uh, with some um, very tasty food kiosks that open up. So if you want to get some really nice local flavor, that's where you, you go. Um, go there during the day, very nice and safe. You can get some bikes. You can go there and bike around the beaches. It's fantastic. Um, so we spent, up, we spent some time out there, um, hung out in a beautiful beach there for a little bit. Um, after a while, we went back to my aunt's house, changed, um, got some dry clothes. Then we went back to old San Juan, um, had an amazing lunch. And I wish I would, for, I wish I would remember the name of the um, restaurant. Um, I, I promise I will get you the name of that restaurant. You can share it in the write-up um, awesome. afterwards. But um, we, most of us ate a traditional um, dish, Puerto Rican dish called mofongo, which is, it's mashed, I believe it, it's mashed green plant, seasoned green plantain that is cooked up and then 
you add, you can either make it with um, chicken, seafood, shrimp, crab, um, whatever you like. Some people make it with beef and then they top it off with either a tomato sauce or a garlic sauce of your choice and you eat it. And it's just absolutely fantastic food. That sounds fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Um, and then we just walked around Old San Juan, went to the, the forts, um, walked around the streets. It was right before Christmas time. So Puerto Rico takes Christmas very, very seriously. And there were all these bunch of little bands with kids singing and people dancing all over the streets in Old San Juan, the blue cobblestone streets. So it was just a lot of fun um, just walking around there. We would stop. Fantastic. Oh, it was great. We would stop every now and then and just grab a drink and uh, just hang out. And it was just great to be with family for a few hours there, partaking in that. That sounds, that sounds amazing. And then just walked, walked back to the cruise ship and got, got, back, got back on board. So Easy breezy. Yeah. And a really great surprise that came from the whole thing, too, to see your mom. I know. It was great. <laughs> That's oh. really fantastic. I'm glad. I'm, I'm so happy for that you had that opportunity. That's not something that most people find on their traditional cruising excursions as well no. see your relatives like that. No, to be picked up by relatives there at the, uh, at the port, it was nice to do. So that was a hoot. All right. So we're heading out of San Juan now. Um, where is our next destination stop? Next destination is uh, Grand Turk in okay. Turks and Caicos. And um, it, th this one is by far, if I have, we, this is the second time we've been to Grand Turk. Um, we have not trekked, we have not trekked off the port basically in Grand Turk because we just enjoy this port so much. It is just a beautiful, it's a beautiful port, number one, um, because the ship's dock right there and it is pristine, crystal clear water. Mm. And there is a beautiful beach right there that you can, um, rent a couple of chairs and hang out all day looking out at to the left you look out and it's just more beautiful water that, or, and sandy beach that you can just walk out to or you can take a look at these impressive ships just looking out that you can snorkel almost 50 feet away from which is totally cool mm -hmm. or if you want you can hang out at a walk up at a, at a swim up bar pool at margaritaville <laughs> with um chairs all around it and just hang out there all day enjoying the beautiful day um so it's just an absolutely fun place um there are some really amazing excursions you can do in grand turk that some of our other cruise buddies have done in the past um, there's some atv um, excursions you can do which i've heard great reviews about um, there's some horseback riding on the beach that people have done that i've heard great things about as well um, and then there's some additional like um, walking walking tours that you could do around the town of Grand Turk as well that you can do, which people have done as well. So, I mean, there's plenty of activities to do. It's a relatively small island, so eat, getting around is not hard at all. Question for you. Why do they call it Grand Turks and Caicos? Uh, well, Grand Turk is the town. Okay. Um, well, Grand Turk is the, uh, is the name of the island. Um, it's... But it's, it's the islands of Turks and Caicos. Okay. Turks and Caicos is the name of the islands. Grand Turk is the name of that island. Okay, perfect. So it's yep. a series of like smaller islands then. Yeah, it's a, the, the, the name of the archipelago is Turks and Caicos. The name of the island where we dock is Grand Turk. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And then, and then um, after that, it's another day at sea. Mm -hmm. which is basically um, a little R&R, &R, pack up, and um, get ready to get home. Uh, did you stop in St. Martin at all? No, this, this one did not stop in St. Martin. Okay, I just wanted to double check that. All right, so then you're heading on back. Um, what was the disembarkation process like? Disembarkation is uh, a little more hectic. There's, uh, there's areas of improvement um, mm -hmm. there. So... Uh, one thing that they were doing well that changed in the last two is um, before they used to give um, the luggage tags and leave them in your room. Now they they started this process where um, you have to go downstairs the day before. So the day at sea, 
um, they put this panel with tags up and you have to get down there early enough to get you know the earlier tags first so if you want zone one tag then you have to you better make sure that you're down there as early as possible to get zone one so what what i've what i've noticed ends up happening is um, people end up taking their luggage down themselves so they self disembark okay. and you've got you've got folks with you know 50 60 70 pound pieces of luggage lugging them down you know 10 flights of stairs Ooh. and um, it causes it causes a little bit of mayhem on the um, on the disembarkation process so um, I'm I'm sure that that uh, that gets sent back in reviews um, for them. Yeah. So that, that's definitely that's definitely an area of frustration, an area that Carnival will need to will need to continue to work on. Uh, How long did it take? Yeah. Do you know? Um, it took us well over an hour, hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of a congestion yeah. point. It sounds like they're going to have to do something about that. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about the post review of this and some takeaways. Um, so if someone was looking to do something similar to this, what do you tell them as far as the pros of going on a cruise like this? So if we're, if we're talking specifically about um, Carnival, the pros, um, there's something for everyone. Uh, it's a bang for the buck. It's, it's a great vacation. Uh, and uh, it, it's just generally a very good time. It's, it's a good time to get away and to disconnect from every day. Excellent. And yeah, if you just have to make sure that you're traveling, you just have to make sure that you're traveling with the appropriate group that knows how to have, have a good time on these things. So. Yeah. I will say this, and this is, this is a prop to you and everyone else that we met on board the previous cruise that we were on. Even if you're traveling just yourself, your significant other, you have the opportunity to meet some amazing people if you put yourself out there. And like we had dinner to get, like we just met, probably about like what six months ago and yep. since then we had the opportunity to uh you know meet each other like almost every night for drinks and then we went to we went to an amazing dinner together we had you know time together it was really a great opportunity and to this day you know we're still communicating together so i mean the people that you meet on board a cruise line might just be the people that you end up communicating with years down the line and maybe even get back together with in order to do another cruise because you have that in common with each other. Absolutely. And, you know, we met, we met some fantastic people on, on this cruise and on previous cruises um, as well. So that's one of the pros is you just never know who you're going to run into. And it, like, it's, it's a millionaire next door type of thing all the way to folks who, you know, have been saving up for years to do this for the very first time because, you know, it's just, they just didn't have the opportunity to do it before. So it's, it's definitely a worthwhile experience that I highly recommend people to do. Uh, and then some people do it once and they're like, Hey, you know what? I tried it once and it just wasn't my jam. So, and that's fine. I, that's the pro that I take out of it. And then on the same light, um, you might end up getting together with people who aren't in your age bracket that are really, really cool. You may have someone that's like 30 years older than you who's just as adventurous as you are. And you might have someone who's um, significantly younger than you that's just, this is their first cruise. And so they're wide eyed and they're like just wanting to experience everything. And they're just really taking everything in. So it's a great opportunity to meet some amazing people on board. Um, yeah. Uh, things to be aware of. What would be some things that you would caution someone to be aware of on a cruise like this? Um. Well, I mean, we, we touched on the medication piece. Be absolutely sure that you're bringing um, all the medication that you need and even some of the medication that you don't need or you may not think you're going to need. So, for example, um, Dramamine, mm -hmm. like motion sickness, uh, and even take a little bit of it before the cruise starts. Even if you don't think you're prone to motion sickness, you might be. Um, I'm generally not prone to motion sickness in small boats, but when you get that slow moving roll on these larger boats, that may tend to affect some people um, versus others. I got a little bit of motion sickness on this last on this last cruise. Mm -hmm. On the August cruise in the Adriatic, um, it wasn't that bad because the, those seas were not as choppy at all. 
Yeah. So that's that's one thing to be aware of. Um, be cognizant of illnesses as well. Um, you know, it's five thousand people in in a ship, so they are very adamant about people making sure that you're constantly washing your hands. There's people. Um, there's uh, all the all the people that work on the ship are constantly you know with little jars of um, like sanitation, yeah. liquid and purell and all sorts of stuff so just be just be aware of that from a health standpoint and uh in general i mean the, the ship is very clean so there wasn't an issue there awesome um, so that's one thing um also things to be aware of um drink packages i don't think we touched on that uh we've done the drink packages the last couple of times I will, I will say next time around, at least for Carnival, I may not do the drink package. Um, some cruise lines manage it a little differently, others don't. It all depends as to A, what kind of, on, on Carnival, what, what you drink and how much you drink of it um, should determine whether or not you choose to purchase the drink package. Did your drink package come with your reservation or was it something no. that you had to pay separately? Now, um, Carnival does it all a la carte. It's unlike some of the other cruise lines where it's like, if you, if you buy now, we'll include these perks mm -hmm. now. Um, Carnival does not do that. Carnival is all a la carte, which is great because at least you know what you're getting. Uh, but Carnival's drink package caps you at 15 drinks per day, regardless of what you're ordering. And it's based on the value of the drink. So... Uh, so if you're if you're a connoisseur of bourbons and whiskeys, don't be expecting to order a Basil Hayden or some high-end bourbon or whiskey because Carnival's generally just not going to have it. Um, Carnival, well stuff. What's that? I was going to say, it's probably going to be well stuff, if anything, that you're going to get. Uh, no, I mean, they, they do have some higher-end stuff, but they don't have, like, the top-of-the-line stuff, um, you know. So, like, yeah. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, something to be aware of. The break even is generally about six or seven drinks a day. So if you don't drink six or seven drinks a day, don't get the drink package. It's oh, just not on that same note, <clears throat> be aware that if you have the drink package, in most cases with most cruise lines, everyone in the entire room has to take the drink package as yeah. well. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, so, all right. And one other thing, um, just any, maybe some value adds, cost savings, or maybe some best practices that you would, I mean, especially with all the cruises that you've been on, what are some best practices that you would recommend to your first time cruiser or the student of this podcast or blog? Um, from a value add standpoint, book, yeah. book early. Mm -hmm. Book as early as possible is generally what I do. Um, I have found I have found that booking booking directly from the cruise line doesn't save you any less money than going from a travel agent, if that makes sense. So I generally just book directly through the cruise line, um, and I have found that it's been it's been about the same. Um, it also depends on the time. So um, I would I. I just, I keep it directly with the cruise line. It's, it's easier if in the event that you have any issues with the actual reservation at some point to maybe get your money back should you need to cancel at some point, um, which fortunately we've never had to do. Mm -hmm. uh, insurance is something that certainly I've been looking into a little more. And um, we, talk, we touched base on this a while back, um, you and me, Scott. And I know you've got some options that you've been looking at. But uh, last year, I certainly did purchase the insurance on the, the August cruise just because of, A, the cost and the fact that it was an overseas cruise should be needed to cancel. And it's something that I'm going to start taking a look at um, more frequently as we start to uh, pursue more of these um, cruises. So uh, certainly start taking a look at the insurance should there be a need for cancellation, whether it be for illness or, you know, whatever the case may be, because it might save you a ton of money down the road. I, I also recommend taking a look at the length of the cruise that a person wants to go on. Cause if you're just going on a three, four, or even maybe five night cruise, do you really need to spend as much on the insurance as you did on the cruise? Or is it a, maybe a better opportunity to look at maybe a seven night or greater cruise and then look at, you know, you have to kind of weigh the, the return on investment for you. I mean, nobody's going to, nobody likes purchasing insurance, but you certainly do like the benefits when it, when, you get sick on the ship or when you have to get airlifted or something like that happens, 
it's really important to make sure that you're covered for something like that. Absolutely. I mean, that's the purpose of insurance. It's one of those things that you don't need until you need it. So yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. I would like to thank you, Ricardo, for everything that you did on this, uh, you know, sh sharing with my students all the information about the trip that you went on. It sounded like a lot of fun. It's definitely something I'm going to engage in a lot of the spots that you went to uh, coming up here in the springtime when I end up going on my cruise. So thank you so much time. for talking to us about that. Well, thank you for allowing me the opportunity. This is great. Of course. I really appreciate it. And maybe on the next travel, uh, if you have an opportunity to do so, maybe we can debrief on that too, if, if you enjoyed this experience. So oh, I look forward to it. Uh, <laughs> thanks. And for my students, um, if you have any questions or comments, anything you'd like to share with me, you can send me an email at scott at theprofessortravel.com. Um, if you're looking at this through YouTube, please click the bell notification at the top in order to get updated on when new videos are released. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe. And then if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you're listening to us on the podcast, certainly rate us. We really appreciate that. Uh, to, to all of you and to the next time, please make sure that every day is a travel adventure. Take care, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye now. Bye, everyone.